Awesome. So, hey, I'm Daniel Boshaw, and I'm from Shopify. For those who don't know Shopify, essentially we are one of the largest e-commerce platforms out there, powering over 300,000 stores worldwide, ranging from you know shops just starting out all the way up to big brands like Tesla, GE, Red Bull, you name it. We allow them to sell online, offline, pretty much anywhere. And I'm on our VR team. I head up our VR team, and it's our role to figure out how virtual reality and commerce go together. Now, when I say VR and commerce, what's the first thing that comes to your mind? Unsurprisingly for a lot of people, it's something like this. It's a shopping mall. It's this thing where you, you put on your VR headset and you're going, wow, I'm going from store to store and I can pick up products and there's aisles upon aisles of things and it's like, this is amazing. Well, is it? Like, personally, I don't like shopping in real life. I'd rather use something like my phone or my laptop. So to have this kind of situation in VR is like, hmm, seems like a, a bit of a, a limited view uh, for, the, for the medium. You have to remember that in VR, you are a wizard. You put on this headset and you can be anyone you want, do anything you want, materialize things at your fingertips. And with that power, like you are a god, and do you really want to be wandering around a boring shopping mall? Probably not. The example I love to give is that of a camping store. Let's say you want to buy a tent. You want to do it from the comfort of your own home and you want to do it in virtual reality. Would you rather be walking around a boring virtual camping store with fluorescent lights and just like stuff all over the place or feel like you're actually on the mountain, in the forest, that so you're actually going to be hiking in. And around you, you see all the gear that you're going to need, and you can reach up and grab the sun and make it nighttime, bring in clouds, see how environmental conditions affect the items that you're willing to purchase. I mean, that is a much more powerful experience. You have to remember that VR is amazing for storytelling. For the first time, brands can actually put people in the stories that their products tell. So when we're considering VR and commerce, we have to step back and say, hmm, why would someone want to use VR instead of something more convenient like their phone when doing shopping? And one of the big things we've identified as being like uh, an advantage that VR has over other mediums is representing scale. I love this photo here. It's where you can see a, an image online, and it's kind of hard to tell exactly how big it's going to be. I could give you measurements and everything and big charts and all that, but it's really only until you see it in person do you go, oh, okay, that's how big it is. And that's not applicable for all products, right? Like if I were selling you a water bottle, a pencil, a mug, I could show you a photo of that and you'd say, cool. Like, I know how big, big that is. If I put you in a virtual environment and be like, here's an HP pencil, you'd be like, wow, Daniel, you are wasting my time. But for stuff like a couch, a car, a new apartment, things where that scale actually matters, well, now VR is actually worth, worth your time to go in to see how big this thing is. So your first challenge when thinking of VR and commerce for your own products is saying, well, does my product actually benefit from being shown in virtual reality? And now let's say you have that perfect product. You say, yes, it will benefit from VR. Now you have this other product, uh, sorry, other problem. How do you bring your product into VR? Or rather, how do you convert it into a 3D model? And there are several ways to go about doing this, and if you do a quick Google, you'll see a lot of things called photogrammetry, where these apps promise you this kind of silver bullet where you take your phone, you take a bunch of pictures, you kind of like walk around the product, and then presto, you have a 3D model. And you're like, cool, so you take your product and you go about doing it, and you end up with something like, you can't see that super well, but it is a boot, and you're like, yeah, I totally see that that's a boot. But now imagine you have this beautiful theme, nicely curated, amazing product photography on there. Are you gonna be proud to put something like this up on there and say like, hey, buy my product? Probably not. So it turns out that to do this type of scanning technology, there's a lot of factors that come into play to do a good scan. You gotta get the lighting right. You actually do have to do quite a bit of cleanup after the scan. And for most people, like uh, starting up like a store, that's a pretty daunting task. We still have problems telling people to take good product photos. Can you imagine me going up to them saying, hey, can you also send me a whole inventory in like full 3D models? They'd be like, you're crazy. So what we're identifying is that the merchants who most benefit from this technology right now are those who either have the skills or the budgets to, to do proper scans, or they have the skills and the budgets to 3D model something from scratch, 
or they already have the models as part of the manufacturing process. So if you have CAD models or something like that, there are ways to then translate that into a VR-friendly format. But now, okay, let's say you tell me, I got it, Daniel, I have my products in, in 3D. Now you have this other problem. How are people actually gonna view it? Over the past year, there's been tons of awesome VR headsets that come to market. And you're like, well, which one am I gonna target? And on the lower end of the spectrum, you have this over here, the Google Cardboard, which what that does is you take your phone and you put in this like little piece of cardboard and you put it up to your face and you say, oh okay, yeah, cool, I kind of see some, like, some VR stuff and you can only look around, you can't like move around or anything. And what's great about it is it's cheap. You can manufacture these like, like a, a, a buck a pop and just send them to all your merchants, just give them away and you're like, yay, everyone has VR. The problem is everyone then has kind of crappy VR. I've yet to see someone put this on, take it off and say, wow, the future is here. Like it just doesn't happen. Where that happens is stuff like over here with the Oculus Rift and the HTC Vive. Quick show of hands, who has not tried either the CV1 Oculus Rift or the HTC Vive? Okay, you all need to go out and try it. Like, I am, I am serious on this one. Like, after tonight, go out, it is your mission to go out and try this. I could be up here all day dancing around saying, oh my God, VR is mind blowing, it's amazing. And what I will say is like, nowhere near how cool it actually is. You have to see it to believe it. But that's the problem. People need to see it to believe it. There aren't many of these on the market right now. So if I'm saying, you know, for there to be a real f a future of VR and commerce, people need to experience the best of the best. Well, how's that actually going to happen? Not like we can't really wait for people to have these in, in their living rooms anytime soon. So what we suggest is to do stuff like pop-up stores, bring people to VR. It's our responsibility to say, we need to go out, be evangelists for this, and show people how amazing it is. At least until these types of headsets that are only you know, rotational movement, you put your phone in it, until those can catch up and offer experiences as good as these, that's kind of what we need to do. But one draw, drawback to doing stuff with, with these devices, and keep in mind with these devices that you put it on, you can walk around, you have these hand controllers, you actually feel like you're in this, immersed in this other world, it can be pretty costly to create these, these immersive experiences. You use game engines like Unreal or Unity to make these like believable uh, things. Like it, it will take time. So wouldn't it be nice if there's a technology that you kind of build it once and then all these headsets can actually just use it? Turns out there is. And recently there's been this tech called Web VR, which as you can probably guess, it's doing VR experiences on the web. It, it just enables everyone to be able to just go to a website and just launch a VR experience. I'll show you an example of it now. Obviously it won't be in VR, but this is an example that we're quite fond of. So this is just a Shopify store. It looks like a regular Shopify store where you'd expect an add to cart button, pick color of a tent, price, description, all that. The difference here though is that this is not a photo. This is a full 3D model rendered in the browser, no special app, no plugin, no flash running. This is all within the browser. So even if I don't have a VR headset, I get immense value from this because I can move it around, I can zoom into it, look at specific details. I'm not bound to you know, the three or four product photos that they picked. And this is, this is actually something called WebGL. So this is run, there's a few viewers out there that let you do that. We're using Sketchfab in this demo here. And it allows you to just run 3D in the browser. But the magic happens when you have a VR viewer. So let's say you have a Google Cardboard. Well, there's this little button down here that says View in VR. So you would click it and then put your phone inside your Google Cardboard and boom, you'd see the tent right in front of you. And you'd see it as you would in real life at the exact scale. Now keep in mind with the cardboard, you can't move around. So you'll kind of see it. Maybe you can like click to go to a different viewpoint, but it's still better than nothing. Now if you have a Vive or you have an Oculus Rift, then the magic happens. Because I press this view in VR button and boom, the tent's in front of me. And not only do I see it, but I can walk up to it. I have hand controllers. These things are being tracked 90 frames per second, smooth as butter, amazing experience, all within the web. And I can go inside the tent and say, yeah, you know what, this will fit the dog, the family, and my favorite cooler, perfect. Take off the headset, go back to the site, and check out. 
okay, so not the best checkout experience, right? Like it would really kind of suck to have this headset on and then be like, oh, credit card number. And you're just like with a wand kind of typing in your credit card number, having to take your headset off, find your credit card. Like it's kind of a nightmare. But for something like this where you're already starting from, from a website, then just going into VR just to view the product and come out, it's fine. But it's not the best case scenario. There's going to be a time where we're going to need to have some sort of wallet system, some sort of thing like Apple Pay, where you're in VR and you don't want to come out of it. You want to be able to view the tent, perfect, change variants, change other products, add stuff to a cart, check out, cool, stay in VR. I'm going to go watch a movie with friends. I'm going to go play pool with friends in VR. I'm going to go to space in VR and never have to take the headset off. And that's the dream. And so we're working with headset manufacturers to figure out how can we enable that sort of seamless checkout experience without ever having to take off the headset. But now let's shift gears just for a second and realize that commerce is this umbrella term that, Shopify, uh, that shopping kind of lives under, right? Shopping is only one part of commerce. At Shopify, our customers are our merchants, those who create and sell beautiful products every day. And so we always have to think, well, okay, well, VR can help from, from the end consumer point of view, but how about our merchants? What are the tools out there that can help them create? VR, like I said, amazing visualization platform for seeing scale, for being able to explore and interact with models. Well, can you imagine having your CAD model for some gizmo you're creating? See it in front of you, spin it around, invite over one of the manufacturers who's in a completely different country. He, he or she joins you in VR, and you're looking at the model together, pointing out things, explaining things. I mean, that's pretty cool. You know, there's stuff like inventory management, just like there's this whole side of commerce that's not like that end consumer experience that we have to keep in mind. So we're experimenting with kind of tools to, to help out in that area. And the first thing we, we built for that is something called Thread Studio. So a lot of our merchants are in the apparel uh, industry, and a lot of those are doing what's known as print on demand. So they have this kind of cool design, and they're selling these shirts, and they're actually not producing the shirts themselves, every time someone orders a shirt, actually there's this third party that prints it and sends it off. It's this really cool thing, like if you want to just like set up a store tonight and be like just making money without having to actually ship stuff, it's, it's a pretty neat trick. And so what Thread Studio is, is a way of designing shirts in VR and then selling them in real life. So you can go in there and you see on these mannequins, real life mannequins, as you would see in real life, they're wearing a shirt that you can then customize design, pose, take photos of, it's kind of a playful environment too, but then at the end of the day, the best part is you can export that thing from VR out into the real world and just start selling it, or just deliver it to your house because it's a really cool shirt that you want to have. So it's one of the first apps out there that lets you export something from VR into, into real life, and that's really cool. But to be honest, not many people are using it, and that's okay. This runs on an HTC Vive, built in Unreal Engine. It's this highly interactive experience. Not many people have the headset. It's a kind of niche thing. But yeah, that's fine. VR is not mainstream yet. But now's the time to be experimenting. Now's the time to throw stuff at the wall and see what sticks. And that's what we're doing every day, just researching, figuring out what works, what doesn't. Because VR is going to come one day to be mainstream. And it's probably going to happen faster than we think. So really, now's the time to jump in and just try as much as possible so you're ready for when that day comes. If you're curious to hear more about how we're getting ready to power the world of, of VR and AR commerce, you can follow our Medium uh, publication at medium.com slash Shopify Follow me on Twitter at PushMatrix, or just catch me after the talks. Thank you. Very cool, thank you. Um, so the total number of people trying those things is still low. Um, are you finding that people come back yet to do some of those experiences? Uh, I guess total number versus engagement. Are you finding that there's a smaller number of people but that are actually engaged? 
Like with with our like specific yeah. product or just in general? Uh, well, specifically with with yours. So. Yeah, no, not so much. Like we have people who just go in, test it out, and a lot of the people who have the HTC Vive are gamers, and they're people who aren't necessarily looking at opening up a store and being merchants. So they'll try it out because it's, we also have some fun kind of new interaction patterns in there that haven't been done in VR before. So they kind of try it out. Oh, that's that's interesting. They'll do some stuff and then they kind of like bank that for later and say, when I do want to create a store or make sure it's, I'll come back to this. But for now, it's people are mostly playing games and, and doing entertainment related things. Okay, very good. Out of curiosity, what, what's your favorite VR experience like across all things? Uh, and, and yeah, so, headsets. So, I'll name two things. One, so the the Vive has this demo called Longbow, where you're like shooting like a bow and arrow. But the interesting thing is that when you pull back on one hand and like with the arrow kind of like notched, the the vibration of the controller changes ever so slightly, so it actually simulates tension, and your brain thinks like, oh yeah, there's totally just like a, a I am pulling back on this bow and shooting stuff. It, it is pretty magical. And the other one is this game called Climby, super silly game, but you're just like rock climbing in VR, and it's pretty fun. Very cool. Do you have questions? Um, just wondering, like, at what point do you take over for someone who wants to put their products online? Like, what are they responsible for, and what are you taking responsibility for on their behalf when they want to put their products online in VR? Uh, in VR, so if I got the question right, so when do we... What kinda, service do you when, provide, basically? What service do we provide? Yeah, so you can... Uh, so right now, shopify.com, you can just like sign up, and we provide you an online store, or if you want to do like a POS system for offline, or you want to sell on different channels like Pinterest, Twitter, Facebook Messenger, and like a bunch of others. Uh, you kind of have this centralized location where all your inventory and all your shipping stuff is, but we're looking at VR as being this kind of extra channel where you can imagine that people inside Unreal or Unity games, native experiences, will want to buy and sell, and we want to be able to just create that as another channel so you'll have, you can sell on there, or you can sell online, or you can sell offline, but all your stuff is managed in one spot. Yep. So if you, do you, are the, are the people creating the VR 3D objects themselves, or are you creating it for them, or how would that? Oh, right, so right now we're still in a pretty experimental phase, looking for partners, working with partners, kind of figuring out that, but the thing is we are a platform, so the eventual goal is that we will just be, like, you will bring your own 3D models, and there will be partners and experts that you can consult to kind of help you out with that, but we will be like a platform that will host the models, that will be able to view the models and, and provide, like, the framework for it. Great, we have a question over there. Yeah, you mentioned that you're also doing some AR research. So I was waiting for someone to say AR, because... That was going to be my next question. Yes. Um, yeah, what are some I, of the Okay, examples? I didn't mention AR because it is a VR talk, uh, but we are also considering AR. So AR, augmented reality, is actually going to be more useful in a lot of cases for commerce. If you think of stuff like uh, visualizing a couch, well, would I rather see a couch in this, like, fictitious, empty VR world, or actually see it in my living room? And that's where, yes, AR is going to be better for, for products like that. The thing is, the text is kind of not there yet. Like, yes, it is. I don't consider, like, when you take out your phone and you kind of, like, point it somewhere and, like, you see this 3D model, like, super imposed on your phone to really be AR. Like, yeah, okay. It kind of is, but it's not immersive. Like, I want the kind of goggles I put on, like the HoloLens, where you put it on and it's just like hands-free, I'm walking around, I'm like, oh shit, there's like this model here that's not in the real world. And uh, for stuff like that, I feel like we're still pretty far ways off uh, from doing it. But I'll just add one more thing. The couch example is interesting in AR when you already have the house that you want to put it in. But let's say you're buying a condo and it's not built yet and the art our architect has this 3D model that you can go in and start designing right away. Well, that would be an experience that VR would actually win at. Very cool. Unless we have another one, we'll just uh, move on. Okay, awesome. Thank you very much. Thank you. Really enjoyed it.